Well, hello, my name is Ian Jameson. I'm a council member of PWMI, and it's a real pleasure and privilege for me to bring you this brief message on behalf of PWMI. In our doctrinal basis, it states that we believe that the return of the Lord Jesus is imminent, is imminent. But what is imminency? Well, if you were to look it up in the Cambridge English Dictionary, you would find that imminency implies that something is just about to take place, just around the corner. And indeed, we believe that the return of Jesus Christ to take his people, the church, into the air, what we call the rapture of the church, is just around the corner. The Bible tells us about certain time periods that are coming in the future. It tells us about a seven-year tribulation that is coming. You can read about that in the book of Daniel. It tells us about a thousand-year period of the reign of Christ in the future. You can read about that in the book of Revelation and all throughout the scriptures. And it tells us about eternity. Eternity in the future, in the new heavens and the new earth. And you can read about that in the closing chapters of our Bibles. But it also tells us about another event that's coming in the future. And it's an event called the rapture of the church. And that's when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come to take us to be with himself. You can read about that in 1 Thessalonians 4 and John 14 and in other places. And we believe that that event could be at any moment. We really believe that it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be the day after tomorrow. And we are to live in readiness for his soon return. I'd like to turn you to um, the epistle of 1 Thessalonians, please, to 1 Thessalonians and chapter 1. And let me read to you some verses here, uh, verses 9 and 10. And Paul writes this, For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And then verse 10 is so important for what we're thinking about today. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. There is wrath coming upon this earth. I think that the global pandemic that we're all passing through at the moment has hopefully raised awareness in people's minds of the wrath of God. And we see things unfolding on the earth today uh, that remind us of things that will be coming in the future, according to the book of Revelation. And yet we, as God's people, are to wait for his Son from heaven. What are we waiting for as New Testament believers? We are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come to take us to be with himself. It's very clear from these verses and from many others that we could go to that the early Christians expected the return of Jesus Christ at any moment, just around the corner. Well, we have to ask ourselves a serious question. Were they wrong? Were they mistaken to have that sort of perspective of expecting Jesus to come at any moment? Our answer to that question would be absolutely not. They were not wrong. They were not mistaken. You could say, yes, but Jesus didn't return in their lifetimes. And every generation of Bible-believing Christians from then until now has believed, expected that Jesus Christ would return in their generation. And that's absolutely true. But it would be our conviction that that is exactly the right frame of mind for us to have as New Testament believers, that we are to be expecting the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to ask you to turn, please, to James, to the book of James and chapter 5. And let me read some verses here from James chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. And James writes this, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. We are to live, brothers and sisters, as if the Lord were to return today or tomorrow, to return at any moment. And this affects our walk as believers, our work for the Lord and our witness to others that Jesus is coming soon and a lost world must be ready, must be ready. Let me read to you uh, two verses from Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 and let me read from verse 23. 
Hebrews 10 and verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. As you see the day drawing near. Can I ask you a question, friend? Do you see the day drawing near? It's essential that every Christian has this perspective, that they see the day drawing near. I'd like to give the last word in this very brief video to the Bible itself, to God speaking through his wonderful word. How does our Bible finish? How does God, through the Holy Spirit, lead John to conclude the scriptures? Well, it's with these wonderful words, Revelation chapter 22, and the last two verses of our Bible, so precious to every Bible-believing Christian. He who testifies to these things says, and here are the words of our Saviour, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. I hope that we all, brothers and sisters, can answer that with those wonderful words. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.